Welcome YouTube pedal people nerds, buffers, and today the Dr. J. I'm a buffer. Um, what does a buffer do? I didn't know. I didn't know you needed these until my good friend Alex Dimov came and said, hey, you need a buffer because that makes it sound better. Okay, so I looked into it and I can still not really tell you what they do. Something about impedance and cables. Oh, let's try to find out. Um, if you use long cables, obviously some stuff gets lost. That's why we need high quality cables. Do not use bad cables. Don't use cheap cables. Bad idea. So the longer your cable run, the more high end, the more dynamics and the more fidelity you will lose. Now, even if we use very high end cables, um, we still use pedals and we use a lot of them if we cool, you know, if we get the body. Um, even if we buy two bypass pedals, which means the signal gets passed directly from the input to the output and the pedal has nothing we need to do with uh, influencing the signal so it doesn't go through the circuit, which is the cleanest way to go through the pedal, it still adds cable length. The pedal will become part of the cable, plus the connectors and all that. So if you have 10 pedals with 10 patch cables in between, that is in essence a suboptimal you know, four or five meter cable with many connection points. And that eats up signal fidelity. A buffer can help you with that. Now, how it does that, I cannot explain to you. Something about impedance matching, I don't know. And apparently when you have old fuzz pedals, they don't like that 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 the buffer does, whatever the buffer does. Um, so if you have an old fuzz face, that's what I read, don't put it behind the buffer, put it in front of the buffer. So what, the, what you do with the buffer is some of them are just little boxes without any switches and you pretty much put it in front of all your pedals if it is an input buffer. If it is an output buffer, you put it behind your pedals and the best thing you do is use both. Use an input buffer in front of your whole chain and then an output buffer at the end before you go to the amp. Um, by the way, you might have noticed I don't know shit. Seriously, uh, about a year ago I got into pedals. Before that I thought it's all done with amps and I had like one, two overdrives and that was it. So any knowledge I have is thanks to you for commenting. Would be nice if you comment, you know, nicely and educate me about stuff I don't know. And uh, I didn't know what GE and SI on a fuzz meant. Yeah, germanium and silicone, I can tell you that now. But uh, YouTube subscribers and YouTube fans uh, told me so that is very nice and this is how I'm, how I'm learning and I'm learning with you and hopefully whatever I just learned I pass on to you so either you go well I know that or hey I learned something from this weird German dude so uh, the armor buffer from Dr. J is cool in three ways it has an input buffer and an output buffer so it is replacing two uh, in one and it also has a boost it is literally just adding level. So 20 dB boost as far as I know. Um, and it's just adding level. Uh, doesn't sound like anything, it's just driving your amp harder. Um, why do you need that? Well for example this LSL Satikoi Stratocaster, thanks to LKG guitars in Gladenbach who have very high-end guitars and you can actually test a lot of these puppies there so you know you're buying the right one. Um, thanks Ludwig, Klingelhofer from LKG Guitars. Anyway, this has 50s pickups, so they're very weak. My students come with like a 200 euro beginner guitar and it's blowing this puppy away when it comes to output. This is really weak in output. So if I want to drive my amp harder and get a little bit more dirt out of it at the same setting, like you saw in the introduction, you can use the armor buffer to help this puppy out, which is nice. You know, that, that might be a neat feature. So, um, one more thing about buffers. Buffers are also built into some pedals. Some pedals are true bypass, some are buffered. Meaning, when the pedal is disengaged, um, it might actually act as a buffer. I think the ultimate drive from Joyo does it. I read that somewhere. That it's not true bypass, but it's buffered. 
Um, I know that a lot of boss pedals do it, especially the tuners, because you put usually put the tuner before your whole pedal chain. So a boss tuner can also do that function. There are dedicated uh, buffers from many companies. And uh, I think Ibanez pedals, some of them do that as well. I read on a forum. Um, I try to stay away from the forums because you get sucked into it and it's just a whole time-wasting thing. But there's... In, in, Important information sometimes to be found there. Um, and of course, if you have a looper slash switcher, because they're usually buffered, as are the Joyo PXL series. Now, if you're using a switcher looper thingy like on my pedal board over there, the PXL Pro, um, A, it is buffered, so it is trying to maintain the quality of your sound, and B, it is only using the cable length of the pedals that are at the moment engaged. So if I, if I got eight or ten pedals in there, but I'm only using the one in loop one, then I'm actually only going through the one pedal with two patch cables, okay? So that's important to realize when you're using a looper, you're actually saving on cable length because it's not always going through all pedals. It is only going through the pedals that are engaged at the moment. So only the loops that are on will, let's say, degrade your sound because of the cable length. Um, and also it's got a built-in buffer, so it's you know trying to get some of it back. The setup we have here is as follows. I put 11 pedals on the ground look at them so there they are put 11 pedals on the ground different companies and they're all true bypass and as you can see they don't have power so they're all true bypass no power connected to them um, so they're just acting as a cable extension so we're going through all of them and in a minute we listen to the sound of going through all these pedals and then into the amp then we also have the sound of going directly into the amp and the armor buffer. We go into the armor buffer from the guitar, from the LSL Sadikoi, with high-end cables. We gotta say this with summer cables that I made myself with high-end connectors. So these are already good. We go into the armor buffer, out of the buffer, into this whole chain of cable uh, of, of pedals. Out of the pedals in the output part, in the output buffer of the armor buffer. Buffer, 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 buffer. Um, and then into the amp. So the armor buffer is pretty much in front of the chain and behind the chain of pedals. Now, when it is, when you listen to the sound with the armor buffer in, you have to remember that there's two more long cables involved, because, you know, we need those. And um, fascinatingly, it does sound better. It does sound clearer and more dynamic. So even with about 8 meters more cable, the sound comes out better. So using a buffer on your pedal boards, highly recommended, and I highly recommend this one because it looks sexy, it's small, it's got the boost, it does a great job. In general, the chain that you're listening to is LSL, buffer, through all the pedals, which are not on or powered, um, back into the buffer, and then into the amp, which is a Sur Badger 18, right there. Going into the Sur Badger Cab 112, warehouse speaker, veteran 38 ohm. Going into two microphones, uh, SM57 and a very inexpensive ribbon mic from Toman. It's called the RB7 or RB700 or something with 7. Um, going into a Universal Audio 4710D preamp. And uh, that's going into Cubase 7.5. Okay. Um, let's first listen to the boost function again, and you can see the settings, okay? So, no boost. Thank you. 
Notice that the distortion on the overdrive you're hearing is not actually the armor buffer. That's my Sura Badger 18 breaking up because we're pushing it harder. So if you're going like, hey, that's a really cool overdrive sound, I want to use the armor buffer. Uh, it, it just depends on how your amp reacts on higher input volumes, okay? So um, now we're going to go and uh, listen to the signal straight into the amp, okay? Nothing else, guitar, cable, amp, that's it. Then we're going to go through all these pedals without the buffer, not even in the signal chain, just through the pedals. And then we're going to go into the buffer, into the pedals, from the pedals, into the output buffer, into the amp. So we're going to have it in there. But you don't have to have the boost engaged. The buffer is active even though the green light is not on. And we're going to listen to that. Enough said. I think that's pretty much all the proof we need that a buffer is a good idea if you have a lot of pedals. Um, if you got one or two, well, you know, maybe not. But always use high-end cables. Put money in cables. You don't have to buy them. Make them yourself. I spent four minutes looking at a video on YouTube and then, well, a whole day soldering. But I got 40 high-end patch cables out of it. Um, so it's a good idea to make your own cables because you can save a lot of money. And you come up with really cool high-end cables with high-end actual cable and connectors. So spend the time and a little bit of money on good cables. And then also use a buffer. And I recommend the Dr. J Elmer buffer. The, the boost is a cool idea. And, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. Get it. <laughs> 